Howdy, how's it going? Welcome back, or howdy if you're new. Today is Amazon Prime Day, and I'm gonna show you some of the best charging solutions for your handheld PC, and I'm also gonna show you how to make sure you're getting the most amount of FPS possible out of your ROG Ally, especially if you're docked, because a lot of you guys are missing out on a little bit of extra performance that you didn't even know you were missing out on to begin with. So, with that out of the way, I'll leave links below to everything and then some, and a big thank you to you green for sending this stuff out. They did not pay me any money to say any of this stuff. I'm not getting affiliate links on any of this stuff. These are merely my own opinions and observations. All they did was just send out the products for me to talk about, and I want to thank them for doing so, but that never impacts my decisions because if you go back, you'll see I've been using you green stuff for years and I have always talked highly about their products. No matter what, I have never had a bad experience with any you green stuff. That's why it gets the, CPPC tech stamp of approval. Now, let's dive in. So the first thing a lot of you guys are probably wondering about is docked mode. If you are using a dock on your ROG Ally, whether it's a big boy dock or a little boy dock, guess what? They consume power. Not a lot, but just enough to where the stock ROG Ally charger will not recognize that it's getting the full amount of power and it cuts off that 30 watt turbo mode it simply will not let it go into that mode at all there are very few docks that can get around that and i have the one that can get around that however there's a caveat you do get a lot of battery drain on this device so that kind of is one of the things that i didn't like about it is it's constantly draining down the battery as it's trying to charge and you do have to flash the firmware to get it to work. So that's not really the best solution, is it? No, didn't think so. So these other docks, out of the box, if you're plugging in enough power to it, you're going to get the 30 watt turbo mode, no matter what. But the problem, like I said, stock power, it's not enough. So you need just a little bit more juice to power the ports and the ally and still allow you to hit that 30 watt turbo mode. Now, of course, on the 25 watt turbo mode, you can still boost up to 30 watts, but on that 30 watt turbo mode, you can actually boost up to 53 watts. So there's a good bit of performance difference left on the table if you don't have enough power. Now, a lot of people say you don't need a 100 watt charger. That's true. You don't need a 100 watt charger, but if you are using a dock, you really do need a little bit more power than the stock power adapter can actually put out in order to let you get that 30 watt turbo mode. Now, why do I say 100 watt and not a 70 watt or 75 watt? Or eight? They don't exist. 100 watt is the next step up available in this kind of charger. Now, this particular model is a Nexode 100 watt GAN charger. And what that means is just a higher efficiency type of charger. It's packed in a lot smaller, compact design, and you get more ports. They also have a technology in here called Thermal Guard. And what that does is it protects the charger and your device from overheating and frying itself to death, basically. And the GAN charger is just a type of efficiency. These things are just really, really efficient. That's why they can pack them in such a small package. The difference between the 100 watt charger, as you'll see, and the 160 watt charger is pretty wild that you can get an extra 100 watts just simply in the same exact form factor. Look at this, this is the 100 watt charger, okay? I've got multiples of these. I love these chargers. I have them in every room. Look at that. That 160 watt charger is the same size as the 100 watt charger, maybe a little fatter, but that's very negligible. You can't like tell me the difference there. It's like really nearly the same. We're talking like fractions of an inch here. So that charger right there is really what I recommend. The 100 watt charger is just enough. You got plenty of extra room to charge other devices. You've also got a type A port. You got two powered ports over here that can do the full power that you need on the ROG Ally. These things are amazing. So I really highly recommend those. Now, the next thing that I really recommend if you're gonna buy one of these is you are going to need 
a USB-C to C cable to power up the ROG Ally or the dock or whatever it is that you're doing. Go ahead and get you a cable and make sure that it says 100 watts or more and do not go over five feet. If you go over five feet, you're going to run into issues where once again, you're not going to have that 30 watt turbo mode because it can't transfer the power that long of a distance at the wattage and the amperage that you need. So be careful when you're selecting your cable and the length. It does matter. I personally like to go between three and five feet. I never go above five feet. And I've even had some five foot cables just simply refuse to work at that 30 watt turbo mode. So I will play around with cables sometimes. The Ugreen 100 watt chargers and their cables work hand in hand with each other. And they have always worked well for me when it comes to that 30 watt turbo mode. So those get my stamp of approval. Now, when it comes to battery options, there's a few mods you can do to the Ally. You can put in a bigger battery, like a laptop battery. You can look up above and you'll see a video that I've done on modifying that. It's a nightmare. I don't recommend doing it. It's a lot harder than it looks. There's a few other battery mod options. But you know what's the best option of them all? It's going to be this battery bank right here. I have used this for so long. I mean, seven, eight months now at least. And I've used it hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. This particular one is the 145 watt. It's got 25,000 milliamps and it basically will double the battery life of your ally and a little bit more. So I was able to run tests and I'll put a video up here above where I did those tests with this versus the ally battery mod. And this actually turned out better. It's easier to put in your backpack. You don't have to permanently modify your device. If you want to get a backplate like this, the handheld DIY backplate, you can put this on like so, and it comes with little straps. I've lost my straps or I would show you, but it's got little straps that hook on here and you can attach it to here. I'll try to put a picture of what it looks like above here, but that's an awesome option right there. And I really, really can't speak highly enough about these battery banks. I freaking love these things. I use this almost every day. I, I cannot thank them enough for making this product because it's made well, it's built well. I've dropped it a couple times. It's withstand. It, it's withstood tons of abuse and it still works just like the day I bought it. So I do like that as far as battery options. So you don't have to mod your ROG Ally. Now, when it comes to docks, this is one I did a review on also. I do like this dock a lot, and it is a very good option at a very good price point. This is ideally for a Steam Deck, but it is compatible with the Ally, the Legion Go, and tons of other devices. And it does give you that 30 watt turbo mode. You've got gigabit ethernet, you've got 10 gigabit USB-C and A, of course, HDMI output. And this can do some high refresh as well. And I like over here where you've got your keyboard and mouse USB ports. You can plug anything into there, but I, I do like that option. And of course, memory card slot. A lot of you guys have memory card issues and you don't want to RMA your device. Just buy a dock and plug your memory card in here. It flips up like that, and it's just a really nifty charger. I do like it. There was a few small caveats with it, but if you want to watch the review, go check it out. Otherwise, it is an amazing dock for the money. Like I said, I'll leave links to that, and none of these are affiliate links, so I'm not trying to shill for stuff to get paid for it. I'm just promoting it because they are good products, and I have really seen some good deals in this stuff. So if you want to save some money and you are looking for some of this stuff, no pressure, but check those links because you might save money today. And if it's something that you've always wanted, hey, now's a good time to pick it up. If it's a good deal for you, if you if you like what you see, feel free to buy it. This is the other dock right here. This one is a very slim and lightweight and portable dock. The model number on this one is the CM512. And I really like this dock right here. You still get one HDMI. It's really all you need. You've got two USB A's over here, your memory card reader and your gigabit ethernet. Now there are some bigger docks that have more USB C's and more USB A's, but 
this kind of does all I need it to do when I'm just on the go and I'm going to take my ally to a friend's house and I want to play a game. This is kind of all I need. It's, it's just an inexpensive dock. I'll leave links to that below as well. Well, this was a quick little video. I know 10 minutes might not be quick to you. It's quick to me. But if you like what you see, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions about any of these chargers, definitely let me know below. And I hope I was able to shed some knowledge and maybe help you out with some of these questions you may have had about charging or docking or battery options. So I hope you guys are having a good one. And until the next one, I hope you have a good afternoon, good evening, or good night.